Hi. Hey, Philippe, how are you? Hi. I'm okay. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello classroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just checking, yeah, we're, uh, we're actually, yeah, we're ready to yeah. go, so if you want, I'm, uh, I'm going to introduce you to both Sonette and Jackie. Ciao! Ciao! <laughs> Come stai? Bene! Ah! Benissima. Ah, sto bene, grazie mille! Hello! We Italians, we don't usually, like, I know that is like, a, a, we always do these things with hands, but... It's actually just uh, oh, a <laughs> I had to try. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for um, making time to talk to us. Um, we're very excited um, to hear from you. Um, so I don't know if you can see everyone. We'll, yeah. we'll reshuffle a little bit so that people can ask. Everybody can be involved in the conversation. Um, but um, as we spoke yesterday, I don't know if you would like to start um, by just like telling us a little bit about yourself um, and what you do, and yeah. um, that would be quite nice just for everyone um, to hear from you. Yeah, sure. But uh, as probably your professor told you, uh, my name is Filippo Lorenzin. I am Italian. Uh, I am an independent curator and critic. Um, well, I'm strongly interested in uh, researches about new media. For the same reason, I am interested uh, uh, in art. Uh, I like to discuss and understand what's going on in these years, and this is one of the most interesting and unexplored fields, according to me. Yes. Uh, as a curator, I am uh, really interested uh, in Internet and new media topics from an anthropological point of view. Uh, I don't think there are really different differences between the new and old media uh, because this is a division brought up from a capitalist from a capitalistic stand uh, I am more interested in uh, a, the post media approach uh, in artists that work uh, on how technology influences life uh, an example in this sense could be Angela Vasco uh, American artist who make social social performances within uh, world of Warcraft. Uh, she's not interested in how online video games work, but instead she focuses her work on the people that inhabit those digital spaces. And um, yeah, uh, as I told you yesterday, I made a little introduction, a little presentation, and I yeah, I made some slides. Nice. Like, uh, yeah, it would really, be very nice if you could share. Really pro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm trying to switch. Let's see how can I share my screen. Screen. That's yeah. the questions we ask. Uh, I think that we can do it. So, uh, conversation. Positiva, chiamo un numero, bla 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 bla. Aha, ok. Ok, I think it's working. Are you see something? Yes, we, we something see. Something like a. Ok. It's bright and clear. Sort of. Ok. Ok. <laughs> voilà. Ok. So, yeah. Um, so-called media art by reading uh, a brief introduction, eventually starting the discussion. Uh, we don't have so much time to discuss the point in the book, but I think it's uh, 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 um, so we can say that in general, means bottom Hello, can you, sorry, can you hear us? So there's a bit yeah. of a connection problem. We cannot hear you very well right now. And you just oh, said it's because of the oh, oh, okay. Yeah. We're a little bit we lost can, in translation. Uh, 
I yeah, think. I'm um, really sorry because I live like in the country seat and okay, wait. It's okay. Can we? Can you hear me? Right. Yeah, we can. Yes. Yes. But we can't see you. It's not a problem at all. Uh, we we don't uh, need uh, <laughs> this light. It was just you know just to. <laughs> <laughs> we really like your presentation on low tech. It's it's very effective. See. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with your face, with the, you know, the little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can see that you are thinking. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Because I don't see you right now, so I oh. wasn't. Okay. We try. Oh, there you go. Sorry. That's it's a problem because I live like in the countryside and the connection here is uh, like. Are we? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Filippo, since like when you share the screen, the connection becomes really slow. You can send us the presentation so we can just look at it um, from our side, and then you sort of just talk about it. Yeah, I can send you a web. of low-tech means a bottom-up approach. Uh, this observation stems from either a private activity, uh, for example, how many times it happened to use old technologies, old technologies that we already had in our, in our houses trying to make something new, and from the mode we can see the technology can be used outside the West. Uh, a simple example, of these are the images of the Arab revolutions with people using old devices, at least for Western standards. Uh, we often see such activity in Africa where obsolete technologies are taken and reused by locals. In general, we can say that the low tech is low on the basis of Western categories. Uh, from a point of view, uh, it reminds us a time when it was normal to touch and modify analog technological devices. And from another, the use of old and recycled media uh, in faraway places intrigue us in, uh, in, almost uh, in an almost anthropological way. Uh, we are curious to see how our waste is reused. Um, mm -hmm. In both cases, uh, there is um, a strong exotic feeling or something quite usual for us that is also slightly different from our daily knowledge. Now, why artists should be interested in such a thing? I've mm -hmm. seen in your blog you started this, you started this lab uh, discussing the low-tech manifesto. Uh, it is a perfect introduction to what does it mean to work with low-tech. Mm -hmm. uh, the, ar the artists who study the low-tech are almost always interested in the recovery of obsolete devices and also, and especially, in the implied approach of this operation. Mm -hmm. uh, I have seen your interview with Raul Marroquin. Yes. I don't know how, the, yeah, Marroquin, okay. Mm -hmm. And he's for sure one artist that uses low-tech low in a political way. Uh, this is a practice that goes against the rules dictated by the system. Uh, it is a hacking, using the term in its original sense. Mm -hmm. in, fact, in fact, to hack is a term born at MIT in the 50s, when and where the first students started experimenting with computers. Hacking meant to going against the rules given by given by the makers in order to create something better. Mm -hmm. In this case, the artist who deals with these questions tend to grasp a particular form of relationship between people and products given by the system. Uh, the use by artists of the low-tech in their work often, but not always, means a political act of revolt. Uh, low tech is very close as practical to the glitch art. Do you know what is glitch art? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh yes. Yeah. In both, perfect. In both cases, we use a product in a different way than that for which it was built. Uh, artist uh, Benjamin Gaulon, that is French, yes. said that glitching a document is a great way to expose its inner workings. And the same goes with technological devices. Uh, when you hack and modify a low tech, you are going to expose the logic with which it was built. I hope this is clear. Yes. Now, back, back to us. Uh, low tech means two things that are very often, but not necessarily far apart. On the one hand, the exotic aesthetic of, rec of recycling, recycling pardon, and using cheap of free technology. On the other, the result of an alternative approach to the industrial materials. A project that deals with these issues has to take a position in relation to this question. Uh, this is a problem related to every work of art, and me, as curator, uh, I am interested in uh, both the cases, and I am fascinated by the projects that use the exotic aesthetic to promote in a subliminal way a political or social message. Uh, an example of this would be uh, Scale Mail, a work, a work by artist Ben Gross. Um, he created a free plugin for web browsers that add to every email you send an algorithmically generated text containing terms which are indexed by the National Security Agency as potentially dangerous, such as execution, uh, explode and beheaded, in order to disrupt their attempts to control the entirety of the messages sent by individuals around the world. Now, I know you are working on a project for an, for an exhibition in London in the coming months. Yes. I've seen you are working with fire, with oysters, and <laughs> with So I am really curious uh, about what you're doing, and I'd like to know, uh, yeah, what's going on there, just that. Wow. Well, thank you. That was very interesting. I think, um, yes, we've been like investigating how low tech is defined, and we've been speaking to quite a lot of different people. Uh, so it's very nice to get your approach. Um, as a curator, I think we all, I mean, because it's such a new, I mean, the field, um, as you said, it's, it hasn't been investigated as such as much as other as other parts of it, and it's good to hear because I think a lot of people we also discussed this. Um, I mean, how a curator defines high tech and low tech, and what do you consider to be good work within this realm? Because it um, it is something that hasn't been defined and pinpointed, which in itself makes it um, very interesting mm -hmm. to explore. Um, to which work is created as a result? Yeah, uh, well, um, I think that as a curator uh, I am interested in those projects that uh, don't have, uh, uh, that don't need to use low-tech. I mean, I am interested in uh, uh, works that use low-tech as a, um, as a as an instrument, not just as a, a sort of aesthetic uh, um, mm. uh, thing. Yes. I don't know how to say that. But yeah, I am more interested in uh, uh, the approach of the artist. And yeah, you are right. And this uh, field is uh, quite new, but not so new uh, as we could uh, think, because this is a field that was born. Uh, uh, in uh, the 80s, 90s, mm -hmm. um, but we can uh, see many uh, cases um, in, in the 20th century that were not so linked to the technological uh, problem, but they were um, about similar uh, topics. Um, Yes, I think that another problem of this field for me, uh, as a curator, as a, as a critic, is that um, there are a lot of tags. So, new media art, uh, glitch art, mm -hmm. uh, low-tech art, uh, 
I take art, I don't think it does exist, but anyway. Uh, for me, this is a problem, uh, because when you put ta a tag on a, uh, a work, uh, it means that this that work uh, has to uh, function just in that uh, field. But for me, a good uh, piece of work, a, a good work of art, uh, is interesting when it does work uh, in uh, yeah in uh, discussing in uh, art at abroad, not just in. Uh, you know, yes. rich art or low-tech art, etc. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so, but, but, I mean, uh, in one of the articles you wrote um, that I found quite interesting uh, was when you said that um, when interacting with other people on the net, individuals reflect more and more on themselves, um, mm -hmm. carefully choosing contents with that others may, might see. So there is a self-discourse in how you redefine the whole motion of identity, repetition, and difference. And I think it's quite interesting if you look at um, the role that, um, I mean, the way that people reflect themselves on the net as a thing where you, you decide, you filter what you make available to the world to see, but in yeah. a sense then that ownership of what you, what you share then mm. goes into this mass of information and I think it's it's quite a focus on um, for a lot of artists um, to explore that notion and and that role that an individual plays within this mass of information and the way that we share mm -hmm. we share yeah. things these days. Um, do you find that a lot of artists um, focus or or there's a lot of focus on that theme, exploring how the individual is reflected? Um, mm. Yeah. Well, uh, in these last years, we raised this. Uh, sort of brand, we can call it like that, uh, that is, uh, I don't know if you know it, uh, the post-internet art. Do you know that tag? Or, uh, we, yes, we've heard about it briefly, but I don't know about the rest, okay, but it would well, be interesting it, if exactly. you could tell okay. us a little bit more about it. Yeah, sure. Well, um, um, in the post-internet art, um, the works are, uh, what? We can say that the works that uh, are, I don't know, post-internet art um, are more related to the things that people do on the web, on the internet, like uh, on the Facebook, on the Twitter, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, in, since uh, of 80, eight, no, 80, no, eight, uh, eight years, uh, yeah, there is uh, um, uh, a new generation of artists that uh, were born uh, in the 80s or in the first years of the 90s that are working uh, with uh, Facebook, with Twitter and uh, all the other uh, social media uh, because for them, like for me and I probably for you too, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I am, as you can see, I'm not, I'm not so old. Uh, <laughs> I, I started to uh, to play with the internet uh, when I was 10, 11. So for me, uh, the internet, and I mean probably for you too, uh, for our generation, we can say, yes. uh, internet uh, is uh, not so... Um, so different from the real life. It's not a, a thing that is apart from what we do uh, on the daily basis. Yes. Um, and these artists are working on this uh, uh, field. But yeah, there is uh, actually a lot of discussion on uh, uh, how and when we can use the post-internet art because there are some artists that, that simply uh, draw a painting and they put, I don't know, some icons uh, brought, uh, brought by uh, Twitter or Facebook or, I don't know, Pinterest or something else. And someone called that kind of work uh, post-internet art because there are some elements brought by internet, but it's not yes. so, so clear. So, yeah, another 
discussion that is really yes. open and that uh, we have to we should schedule discuss. another we'll schedule another Skype Skype session for that topic Please no I'm sorry I didn't Can you hear? I said we should schedule another um Skype interview to just discuss yeah, sure. that topic. <laughs> Sure, sure. But, um, yeah, yeah, it, it will, yeah, it will need uh, like a three days workshop. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, we're happy to come to Venice to visit. Yeah. Um, but I think um, just to pick up on what you said now, I think um, with all the social platforms and the internet and people having um, the accessibility to these tools, I think what it's quite interesting is to see because everybody's got access to to the information I think how you interpret that and visually I mean that takes it back to how you could use all this techno technology but explore it in a different way by utilizing low tech and also the combination and the contrast between all these different platforms I think it takes it back to having a very clear vision about what you want to achieve with the work you create. Um, that whole thing of accessibility and then also what you what you do with all all the tools and things we have access to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a, a, a nice topic. Um, I think that is uh, interesting to see how uh, these artists uh, work within uh, context like uh, let's repeat Facebook or Twitter uh, because yeah uh, it's uh, not far um, away it's not different from uh, low tech art or uh, yeah we can call it like that um, because that artist is working uh, within a context that was built by someone uh, that want to, uh, by someone that want that that context uh, would be uh, used in a different way. I mean, yes. an artist that insert a, a work, a pro, a, an art project inside Twitter uh, uses a Twitter, but Twitter is not it was not built for. Um, for showing art, for example, yes. and the same goes with the Facebook. Mm. Um, yes, but this uh, approach uh, uh, it it's is not really uh, new um, because in uh, the 20th century we saw many uh, artists and uh, artistic art movements that uh, worked on uh, this. Um, this problem, this topic. I mean, the uh, when you have to uh, put your work of art within uh, a context that was not built to show art, yes. you know, like uh, uh, Dada or Situationism um, um, mm -hmm. or uh, uh, oh my God, uh, Alan Capro with uh, the uh, Oh my! <laughs> oh my God! Uh, you know Alan Capro? Yes. Okay, Alan Capro, for example. Oui. Um, yeah. So uh, this kind of approach um, uh, links this kind of approaches on the web with uh, the history of art and. I know uh, really well this topic because I wrote about this uh, at my university some uh -huh. years ago, mm -hmm. and and I will, and I interviewed some uh, artists, some uh, new media artists like I don't know if you know them, uh, Aram Bartol. Yes. Yeah, no? Okay. Uh, or um, what? Well, yeah, Angela Vasco. Or uh, but anyway. Um, and when I, I approach them uh, to say hello, I have to interview uh, about your work from uh, I don't know from a, uh, a political point of view. Uh, they uh, told me, "Wow, fantastic!" Because uh, no one asked us to uh, talk about 
this work um, from this point of view. They always ask us, uh, oh, what kind of computer did you use for doing this, this work? Or what yes. software? And I think that tagging uh, uh, this kind of researches with uh, glitch art, computer art, uh, or uh, as I, I mean, yeah, in France they say uh, numerical art. Uh, am I wrong? Mm. Yeah. Art numeric, oui. Mm. What? Art numeric, yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. And for me, that name maybe is is more uh, uh, precise. It's more, um, yeah. It's good. Because anyway, it has to be with the language of numbers. You know, the binary code of yeah. the computer, the language, and that. But so basically, would you say that uh, law technology, or law tech, is basic? I um, mean, is is based on the process rather than the technique? And probably yeah. what artists are doing today in the post-internet. Um, movement is like they're focusing on the t not on the technique, but it's rather the process, right? Of yeah, or yeah. kind of a working with the technology that was developed for something something else, and they're just doing it in a different way. And mm -hmm. what is going to make the difference between uh, uh, generated um, art by the internet is not going to be the same that something is an artist using the internet for, yeah. to create something, you know? Because that's the boundary. It's difficult today to define what is art and what is not. Exactly. People using yeah. Google Earth or just, you know, to just to take photos of the sat satellites and showing that as art, you know, it's not because you're using a, a satellite that is art, right? But they, yeah. you're using a technology and so I believe that there is the process behind and, and some of the artists focus on the technique rather than the process and they don't give enough information about how they do and why they do what they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, when, well, when you started to talk about the works uh, uh, of the people that take take pics, uh, screenshots of the Google uh, uh, Maps. I was uh, thinking to uh, think that happened to me last week. Uh, some uh, artists, um, they didn't know each other, uh, email, wrote an email to me uh, and we were, I don't know, four or five and way uh, they um, showed me showed me their uh, some their old works uh, like from uh, I don't know five years ago maybe when uh, Google introduced the uh, street view and yeah they all <laughs> made uh, these screenshots of in inside the street view so uh, and I mean me too uh, took some uh, screenshots in the street view. So, how do you define something that is art and something that is just, I don't know, documentation? And I mean, in art, uh, um, we have tons of books, tons of video, I don't know. Uh, a lot of artists that work on this, uh, on this problem. And, and, and I think that um, the conceptual art uh, did uh, give an answer to this question. I mean, the uh, artist, um, the approach of the artist makes the work a work of art to me. And I know this is a really general, <laughs> generic, uh, answer, but uh, this is for me the basis, the basis of the of a of a work of art, and this uh, is more uh, important when you work within uh, the web, so with uh, tools and softwares that are uh, used both by artists and both by I don't know users, and um, yes. This is another question that is really interesting, and that we are we, as I don't know, no we, but yeah, creators and critics and artists are discussing in these uh, years. Because yeah, as I said before, uh, there is a division between uh, the old generation and the new generation. We can say something like that, yes. because the old because the old generation that is linked to uh, the net art. So in a 90s approach, 
Uh, do you know me? Do you know Nate Art? Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, I mean, Nate Art was um, uh, was about uh, the language, about the the code and how the internet does work. Um, while, yeah, the new generation is more interested in the sort of post the internet approach. So, yeah. Me as an artist, uh, I am not interested in how the, this website does work, but, yet, but I am interested in uh, what this website uh, contains. Or yes. And you. I think. Uh, yeah. Um, can I quickly interrupt you? Um, because sure. we cannot see you anymore. Um, so mm. we, we're looking oh. at. Yes, and it's so sad. Oh, no. <laughs> Because, yeah, as I said before... Oh, you're thinking of it. Oh, there you are. Yeah, yeah okay. Ciao. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I'm sorry. Could, okay. You were saying something about the net art, because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but net art was invented, was conceived as an art that it was not supposed to be seen at a museum or at a gallery. Yeah. It was so people yeah. can see it at home. And I think with a lot of technology and the ways that we interpret, well, we, we use new technologies today, we're actually changing the use, the user experience or audience experience. So we we actually bringing back net art to the museums, and we're putting it back actually to the museums and bringing the computers and burn, thinking about the, how we're gonna interact with an with an interactive piece or you know or or mm. and, and it's funny because uh, but it's interesting actually because the project we're doing at uh, Sachi in January, mm -hmm. there is one group that is working. Uh, well, Jackie actually, you're working, you're thinking about how we can question the user experience. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, how people, they, they're going to use, how they're going to, with augmented reality, how they're going to actually talk about, or, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe they, they're, they're interested, they will be interested in, 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 in trying the thing, or maybe not. Mm -hmm. and, and, and all that is actually, um, we're changing again the rules of the technology that we're just doing it in a different way. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm, I was thinking that Probably the, your approach to this project and uh, probably the all low-tech uh, approach as a political approach to the world, etc., etc., um, me well, it probably stems from uh, a 90s or 80s context. So as you say, uh, from uh, the same context uh, of net art. So yeah, as, it, as you said, the net art was not uh, made for uh, museums or uh, galleries. And uh, this, uh, this is a problem right now, uh, because for uh, the old generation, uh, the new, I mean, I don't want to say that all the artists and all the critics of the old generation think that, but yeah, it's a sort of uh, feeling. Um, most of them uh, think that uh, the works of art that uh, are made by the new generation is uh, problematic because uh, it's a sort of, um, you know, that kind of works are, uh, can be actually uh, exhibited in uh, galleries or uh, museums and, well, they can be sold and this is for this is a problem for uh, uh, someone that uh, made uh, uh, works that were not made for uh, galleries in the 90s because yeah you know uh, there, back there there was some kind of activism uh, some sort of uh, disruption of the system while now uh, the new generation yeah, someone is uh, interested in this kind of activism, but not always, or maybe not not in a so clear uh, manner. Uh, it's just yeah. Actually, I was reading the, your blog, so yeah, I, I think that I understood something of the things you are doing in uh, that lab, and I think that your approach. <laughs> I'm trying to make the blog even clearer. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your approach. I think this is. I think is a more. Um, I don't know. Is linked to both the ways for me.
because from uh, one hand you uh, made something that is really classic. I mean, uh, the, the, you um, disrupted the, 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 the devices and this is uh, not usual for uh, the post-internet uh, generation. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, you can just say that, I mean, uh, some of them right now have uh, maybe an iPhone or, I don't know, some kind of tablet or I don't know. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. So, um, I, I am thinking to the iPhones. They are uh, sold, you, when, when you buy an iPhone, uh, this device is uh, made like uh, you, can, you can't open it, okay? You, I mean, it's built like if it is a sort of uh, a monument, I don't know, an object that you cannot open. Yes. And this is really different from uh, the devices you uh, you had you had in your uh, at your homes when you were kids. I mean, I am thinking to uh, the old cell phone that my the first cell phone of my dad, my daddy, and yeah, <laughs> it was really simple to open. I mean, uh, and I think that uh, this approach. Of your, of yours, uh, is really linked to the uh, first uh, phase of low tech art. I mean the the disruption part. While the um, the things you are doing uh, with the um, with the uh, with the objects with the uh, oysters, okay. but not just them. I mean all the other objects. Uh, the uh, exploration of the possibilities of every uh, material for me is uh, um, more related to the second phase. So the yeah the more recent uh, uh, researches. Oh. And so yeah, I'm, I'm really 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 interested to see how yeah. this will be exhibited because in January uh, I will move to London, so I am sure. So I will, for sure, go to see your your project. That would be great. Um, it would be after our discussion and and the input we've got from you. I think it'll be interesting um, to hear your opinion on the works that we created. And uh, yeah. yes, we hope not to disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> and the project actually they're going in different directions now. Yes, yeah, so now we're working um, collaboratively, but in smaller groups. So we will okay. probably be creating four um, individual projects, um, which should also be interesting. Okay. Yeah, uh, I was really uh, glad to see yesterday when we uh, wrote each other. I was uh, actually glad to see that you are uh, really very useful. Class. I mean, uh, there are not people interested in uh, uh, art or just in, uh, I don't know, a specific topic. So for me, your class, this lab, uh, is a really interesting uh, experiment. And I am really curious to see uh, how do you relate it to make something. Because uh, in my university, there was uh, uh, some kind of uh, it was the same uh, situation, there were a lot of people that were not so concerned about art. And when uh, uh, we had to uh, make uh, projects all together, all together uh, I mean, the first two weeks we uh, were just discussing on, oh my god, but how can you say that this is art, or how can you say that you can use use this tool. So I am really interested to see. And then and you are all also uh, not all from the same country. For me, this is really, really interesting. Uh, how do you, uh, where do you come from? I come from Afrique de Sud, South Africa. Okay. Yes. So we've... <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> should, should I show you on the map? <laughs> <laughs> if this is Africa, I'm from there. 
Disney. Seriously. Wow. See. Si. Um, exotic. Very exotic. <laughs> um, but I think it is um, interesting because we so many, um, yes, as you say, different cultures, different nationalities, you want to different, different skill sets. I think it'll be interesting. It's already quite interesting to see what, what everybody yeah. adds to the process. Um, to see what the outcome is. Do you want us to introduce ourselves so you can know who everybody is? Yeah, yeah, it would be good. Okay, yeah. great. Thank Do you, you want to say hello? <laughs> yeah. Show your hand with Canada. Hi, I'm Helga. Hi. I'm from Canada. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm Max. I'm from Australia. Oh, okay. Well, from Australia. From Australia, How all the way. Hours, uh, hmm? How many hours by plane? By yeah. plane, it's uh, 22 hours, and then you have to take into account that there's the time difference. So 16 hours wow. flying, and then there's always a stopover, and then there's a time difference. So sometimes it takes three days, depends which way you're going. Okay. <laughs> Radical. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm Jackie. I was born in China, but I went to part of my high school and college in America. I also spent one year of my elementary school in Japan. Mm -hmm. Wow, where America? Can I ask you? I, I, I'm oh. sorry, but I'm always really interested in where the people. I went I'm sorry. to I went to college. Uh, I went to the Claremont Colleges. It's um, it's a city that's like an hour drive from Los Angeles, downtown Los yeah. Angeles. So it's in the Los Al Los Angeles yeah. area. <laughs> Very okay. Great. Um. <laughs> My name is Claire. I'm from the U.S. I'm from Texas, and I also lived in Missouri and Washington State, so Kansas City and Seattle, and then moved uh -huh. back to Texas. So. Okay. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm Klaus. We we know each other by email, right? Yeah. yeah. From, from, from Twitter. Yeah. From Twitter. <laughs> we have never met in person. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is via Facebook, Twitter. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Basma. I'm from Egypt. From? Egypt. Oh, wow, okay. Fantastic. Lovely place. And there's Andrew. Oh, and there's me. My name is Andrew. Um, and I'm from the States, uh, from like the DC, Washington, DC area. Yes. Okay. Wow. Nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> You know, Filippo, what is good also to say is that most of the students here, well, they, they, they come from different backgrounds. So we have an architect, we have an interior designer, or oh, a couple of artists, designers, sound designer. No, you don't want to be a sound designer anymore. And, um, and yeah, that, that's it, right? Yeah. Photographer. Ah, photographer. Sorry, Andrew. Sorry. Who's, who's you're an artist. You're an artist. So true. Slash photographer. <laughs> Okay. I come from Italy. <laughs> okay. You're Venice. Yeah. Did you were you born in Venice? So you come from Venice originally or No, no. I come from a, a really small village near I don't know if you know the city Padua. Yes. Yeah, seriously. In the, near Padua, but yes, I studied uh, at the School of Fine Arts in Venice, and then at the U of University uh, in Venice. Uh, yes, I lived there for uh, two years. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting city. So, yeah, can imagine. And now you are moving to London. Um, is that are you going to work there as a curator or? Um, is that just yeah. a temporary shift? No, no. I mean, the, the best, the best plan. Uh, in, in the, yeah. I hope to go to work as a curator in London, but yeah, that, that's the plan anyway. Because I don't know if I can say that because we are recording this this thing. But anyway, mm -hmm. because the, my girlfriend lived there uh, since two years, and I am going to oh, okay to camp with, uh, with okay. her. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's just. And, a logistical well, thing. We'll hold them so it goes well in London. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But anyway, actually there is another uh, reason because, yeah, and we turn back to the more academic discussion. 
because here in Italy uh, it's really is really problematic to work. For, I, I mean, uh, at least for me that I live in a very far away from uh, big cities. I mean, uh, for me, um, I mean, if I want to go to Milan, I have to take uh, uh, three. Um, uh, three, tra three trains and uh, I have to spend four hours. So yeah, I am not so close to to the main uh, yes. cities. Mm -hmm. And I, what I what I what what I wanted to say is that uh, in Italy uh, there is not there is not a re a real um, new media scene. We can call that. Uh, I mean. Yeah, in Milan and Brescia there are some interesting artists. Mm -hmm. and there is a, a Domenico Quaranta that is a, a really uh, interesting, uh, important critic, but um, there are not uh, places, there are not galleries or uh, spaces uh, like in Paris. In Paris, I mean, I was so surprised when in January uh, I visited uh, Paris, and I saw so and I saw many galleries uh, interested in showing uh, new media art or net art or something like that. For example, uh, well, uh, before I um, I talked about uh, artist uh, Ben Grosser, okay. and mm -hmm. I know that in these days he is in Paris because he is. Uh, doing an exhibition uh, at the Galerie Charlot. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I can give you the link because I think it's a really he, he's a really interesting artist and the space is really uh, is really good. There are a lot of interesting exhibitions. Great, right. that uh, that would be very yeah, nice if you could share us the link so we can go see. Yeah, sure, sure. But yeah, in Italy there are not places like that, or I don't know why, but you know, I, I think that is probably the same uh, uh, problem that it could be in uh, Paris, but I don't know, for maybe maybe Paris uh, doesn't feel the same, uh, doesn't feel the same. I mean, in Italy we have a lot of uh, historic cities, so you know, yes. Milan, Florence, Venice, Rome, Naples, and so on. So uh, we are really um, tied to our past. Yes. And I, I think yeah, it's it's okay. I mean, uh, you if you as an artist work within a new media field, you don't have uh, always to do something new, something that says the past. Yes. No one cares. I think that is a really. Uh, Idiotic uh, approach. I don't know if idiotic does exist as a term, but I, oh, yeah. <laughs> it does. It does. Oh, yeah. We yeah, understand. Does, okay. We understand completely. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, mm, I mean, in the university, in the school, uh, in the art schools, or in the universities, there are not so many uh, courses or uh, labs. Uh, uh, yeah, about this kind of topic, and yeah, in London is probably one of the best choices mm -hmm. uh, right now for uh, people that want to study this kind of uh, of field. I mean, probably Paris, uh, London, and and yeah, I don't know. But in in the last few weeks, I um, I sent I sent I. Uh, talked with uh, many friends, and they told me that there are a lot of students that are moving to Prague or Budapest. Ah, so I don't know. That's Maybe interesting. We have to go to the east. I don't know. Yes, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, what is the time? How long? Do we yeah, okay. Yeah. For? yeah. Um, Filippo, well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> what, we go, what we're going to do is we're going to share with you the new projects they're working on. Yes. And if you're in, uh, yeah. in London, let's see if we can actually, I don't know, yes. somehow we'll work with you in London as well in the Saatchi project if you're interested. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you sure. Can, I mean, can either, either in person or via Skype. Yeah, sure, sure. We can take also a real life beer. Why not? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. But Thank grazie you, mille. It was very nice speaking grazie. to you. And we'll, you. we'll see you in London. Yeah, I am really sorry for my English. I know that this. But uh, no, it was it was very good. <laughs> really Italian English, I know. Okay, <laughs> bye. Okay. Bye. Ciao. Ciao, ragazzi. Ciao, ciao.